Right. Thanks, Chrissy. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. And um, yeah, it's uh, the best place to go and find gold is where, where um, gold's already been found. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Alto Metals and our sandstone gold project in Western Australia, which we're obviously really excited about. Um, it's had a, sandstone's had a long history of mining, as, as Chrissy alluded to, and, um, and there's a number of historical old pits there, and the image on the front you're looking at there is one, um, one of those, one example of a number of three or four other pits. So it's an open pit, it was mined down, um, just oxide mineralisation, and as soon as they hit fresh rock, they stopped mining, so it's a very small mill. So um, that was mined uh, about 20, 30 years ago, so a lot of the history that we've had there has been... Um, just focus on these sort of shallow oxide pits and when we, we started drilling a lot below them and finding a lot more gold um, and it's, it's growing the resource and I'll talk about that now. So just quickly that's a, a disclaimer to read. So as we're, we're an advanced West Australian gold explorer we've got a strategic ground position of over 740 square kilometres and over the sandstone greenstone belt in the East Murchison so we're surrounded by number of multi-million ounce deposits, operating mills, so it's a fantastic spot to be. We've got optionality over toll treating or, or standalone and, and developing it ourselves. Our resource at the moment is um, very good. It's of 832,000 ounces at 1.5 grams per tonne. It's very, very shallow. Um, and we can see significant exploration upside here. We've really only just started scratching the surface. We've been adding ounces pretty rapidly. Um, and this is our continues to be our focus of, of growing those ounces. So the strategy at the moment is focus on near-term growth and, and I guess that higher um, regional, higher risk, higher return regional exploration, which we'll go into. So very, very quickly, um, on the market cap side, so we've got about 700 and just over 720 million, uh, 720 million shares on issue. Uh, share price is about 3.4, so our market cap sitting about 24 uh, million dollars. So that equates to an EV per resource ounce of just over 20 dollars. Um, and when you think of where the, where the gold price is at the moment, um, and typically the peers, and it obviously depends on which peer group uh, companies you include or exclude, but the peer average is sitting around 40 to 50. So we're well below our peers at the moment as well. So I think it represents a really good value. value. Um, this is the image. Um, so you can see here in the blue is our tenement outline. It's sitting over that whole sandstone greenstone belt. Um, and you can see out to the west there, that's, you, I'm sure you're familiar with Romelius. So Romelius have got their checkers um, mill out that way. Um, there's a sealed road that runs all the way through our property to checkers. And then over to the, um, to the east is, um, is Goldfield's Agnew deposit. So two key deposits there. And then um, further to the north, um, northwest is West Gold's operation. So obviously Romelius and West Gold are in the paper quite a bit at the moment. Um, quite a lot of rumours happening around MA, and I think there's starting to be quite a lot more activity happening in the broader region and across the whole gold space as well. Um, so getting to Sandstone is fantastic. Um, you can drive up there, it's about an eight hour drive from Perth. You can fly up, and um, there's a landing strip there, it takes about an hour, so we, we take broker trips up there quite often. Um, so it's really, really accessible. We've got a couple of houses in the town, um, and, and I said we've, we've sort of developing um, that project um, quite quickly. So we put out a resource update last year, um, and the key things to note about this resource, um, that 832,000 ounces, we, it's optimised within, um, it's pit constrained and optimised. And that means that we've sort of used a $2,500 gold price, and we've put mining parameters around it. Um, so it's quite, it's a very robust resource. Um, it's all very shallow, so 90% of that resource is less than 150 metres from surface. Um, it's good grade at 1.5 grams per tonne. And importantly, when you're looking, um, I guess when you're going through and screening a lot of your gold um, um, stories that you may be following, um, we've undertaken quite a lot of metallurgical test work. And that met work's important for determining whether something's refractory or non-refractory. And from what we've seen, our recoveries are up to 98%. So no indication of refractory at this point. And, and the gold can be recovered through a very simple CIL process, um, which both the mills um, at Romelius and Agnew are, and, but we're focusing again on that standalone and trying to grow that resource rapidly to, to get to support a standalone position. And this is a great example of that resource growth. And there's two things I want you to take away from this slide. One is between 2018, 19 and 20, the company was subject to a number of um, takeover offers. And that really did hamper us from getting out there and hitting the ground really hard. Um, it's difficult to raise money when you've got bids and so forth and, and there's you know, various other factors in place. So it really sort of ham hamstrung the company and we did miss out on quite a strong uh, gold run in, um, in the, that junior space a few years ago. But as you can see, when those bids sort of um, were defended and sort of um, fell away, well, there was the noise there, um, you can see the, the two grey charts shows the drilling that we did in the subsequent couple of years. 
um, 60,000 ounces followed by 50,000 ounces. And you can see that resource grew very rapidly. And that's why we, we were very confident that this resource is really only constrained by drilling. Um, and we've got, we're looking at sort of um, having another re resource upgrade up this later this year, and I'll talk about that shortly. So if we just zoom in on our project, and the challenge with, with sandstone is there's, um, because it's had some, such a long history of, of mining and there are a number of resources and, and small deposits there, how you prioritise and sort of um, focus those areas. And the reason we initially went to the, the south east of the project, which is where we're looking, we're calling this our alpha domain, is that's because we're, that's where all of our resources are. So initially it was stepping out, drilling below some old pits and stepping out and chasing a long strike. Um, and we were adding some ounces there. And we, we did that down at the Lords in the bottom uh, right hand corner of the slide there. So Lord Nelson, Lord Henry, it's a, it's a granodiorite intrusion. Um, and it hosts two oxide um, open pits, as I said. So we've drilled below that, grown that resource to 400,000 ounces in that camp. We then moved up to Vanguard, which has a number of historical um, old shafts, old timer shafts, so that these guys were going down and sort of mining out sort of 34 gram plus material. So we've sort of um, grown that resource from 50,000 ounces to 150,000 ounces. That resource is still open a long strike on northwest trend and at depth. Um, it also hosts our highest grade deposit at Vanguard North, and we put out a release the other day that we've seen a, a soil anomaly just the north of Vanguard North, which looks like a, a lookalike, so that's pretty exciting for us. If we move further up that corridor, we then get to Indomitable, and Indomitable's huge. It's, um, it's got an oxide footprint at the moment, which we believe is an indication of something much larger at depth, but it's defined over three and a half kilometres. So we've got mineralisation, mineralised footprint over three and a half k's. Um, it's open in all directions. Um, we put out some fantastic drill results last year, sort of, sort of 27 metres at seven grams per tonne. Um, very nice and shallow. Um, and uh, the more that we keep drilling in Domino, we just keep finding a lot more gold and we can see that growing quite rapidly. And then we move to the very top of the corner um, point and um, Bull Oak, which was the image on the front. And this is what I want to talk about today and where we can see some considerable growth here. So Bull Oak, um, as I said, that was mined um, during the, um, of, of quite a few years ago. Uh, again, just mined out the oxide. They hit fresh rock, they stopped mining. So we've, we drilled um, a very small program last year. There were a couple of old WMC holes that were drilled. Um, it was WMC and Troy Resources, and they both hit about 240, 50 metres at about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So big, broad zones of mineralisation, and within those zones, there were some very high grade um, up to 18 um, to 20 grams per tonne. So a number of stacked loads within there. So we, um, we sat down with our resource um, consultants and we decided to sort of test um, how big that strike could be. And, and we sort of did some big step out holes, sort of 80 metres from, from both of those holes. And those holes both came back with over um, 160 to 200 metres of mineralisation, again, running at 0.6 to 0.5, but within that some very, very high grade. Um, the key thing about this is it'll bulk out, is what we believe. And the other part of it is, from what we saw at the time, the mineralisation was just constrained to within that granodiorite, so it's 400 metre long by about 150, 200 metres wide. The step out holes also tested outside that granodiorite and we hit more mineralisation, so that's quite exciting. So it's telling us the mineralisation is not just constrained to within the granodiorite. And also within that, you're getting some very, very high grade reefs. There's the, I can never pronounce the second one, but bear with me, there's the Kohanor, the Falbalar, so I apologise to any Irish people here, and then the Bull Oak Reef. So they were both all mined. They're over sort of, these guys again were mining 30 gram material, so out, out, got ounce um, gold material out of that. Um, so we pulled all that together and we released this morning actually, so it's um, the first time I've spoken about this, an exploration target um, for Bull Oak. Now we, we think this is quite a conservative exploration target and it represents a 25 to 36% 30, growth in our total resource. Um, we've extended the mineralisation down um, just to 260 metres, and we think that's reasonable from an open pit point of view, but um, Lord Nelson has an optimised pit down to about that depth. Um, and we've extended the mineralisation, again, just within the granodiorite. So we've taken those holes and we've projected them up dip and down dip, and this has been worked through um, certainly internally by a lot of our consultants as well. And we've taken the grade that was there and then projected that there. And sort of, so we're confident that we can grow this resource quite rapidly. And we're planning a five to 6,000 um, metre RC program to go and test that. And we believe that we can convert that um, hopefully into, a, um, into a, a, an updated resource on Bull Oak. The key thing about it is um, that would become one of our biggest um, single deposits. And it certainly supports a, sort of a base load sort of as you're looking towards taking these things into development. So it's quite exciting for us. Um, 
and that's sort of that's really where a lot of our short-term resource growth is coming from. But I think that the scale of that is um, is quite exciting. And then we stepped out and we looked at um, other surroundings. So what's the near mine potential around Bullock? And what you're looking at here is um, all those gold squares are all old shafts and old workings, and the pink circles are other um, intrusions that haven't got any resources on them at the moment. And you can see there's a significant amount of workings there, so it's just a clear indication that there was gold there. And um, we've also in identified a number of what we believe are other intrusions um, further out to the east there. So we can see this as a camp becoming a much, much larger area. So that sort of um, really points to further growth within the Bullock region. So I've spoken mainly about the Alpha Domain, and if we step back, um, and this is showing, the, the yellow is the outline of our entire tenement package, which is over 730 square kilometres. Um, and it's been part of the challenge of how we prioritise all of these prospects, um, because there are multiple targets for us to, to choose. And, and so I guess from an M&A perspective, you're not going to see us going out buying more ground and acquiring um, other projects in the region, because we've got enough um, targets ourselves. It's about um, prioritising those. Um, but there's some really tantalising targets, and, and I think I just want to quickly touch on two of them, which um, probably were, were at the time two of the highest grade gold mines in Australia, or certainly in Western Australia. Um, Hacks and Arroyo, so we're calling this our Hacks West region. Um, it's, it's our regional exploration. Um, they were both mined in the early 1900s. They both produced over 200,000 ounces at 16 and 25 grams per tonne. Um, so in today's terms, they're company makers in themselves, and there was, there's, there's two historical ones on our property. Um, we, we're looking at sort of chasing extensions of those um, along strike, but the, the key thing that we've done here, and the image you're looking at is in that sort of four kilometre area to the west. Um, there has been quite a little bit of drilling, well, quite a bit of drilling there. You'll see sort of from the, the, the colours um, is the max gold, um, but also what you'll see is there's an absolute sort of sparse of, of, of drilling to the west there. Um, and our uh, consultants helped us so that, again, the gold squares and circles that you see are historical workings. So what we're taking out of this is there's a hell of a lot of gold workings in this whole area and there's been hardly any drilling. And then the next thing that jumps out or jumped out at us was that Arroyo and Hacks are both on a north-south um, trend, so that sort of on the, on the page there you'll see, and the reefs are dipping to the west. And if you look at a lot of those old historical workings, they're also on a north-south trend. Um, and there's been hardly any drilling there. So for us, this is a really key and exciting target, and I guess it's in that regional side. So we've got a, a very safe and, and sort of um, near-term growth strategy and story around sort of sandstone and the, the resources themselves. But if you're looking for a high-grade company-making discovery, this is where it's going, and we, we have both. So we're really excited about the dual track process that we're, or exploration strategy that we're progressing at the moment on these. And so why Alto? I guess, um, I think I was saying with Christy, I think the, the key thing is I'm, I'm amazed that we're trading, when you think about where the gold price is at the moment, um, at around about sort of $20, $21 an ounce. So I think it represents significant value. Um, so that's one, for one thing to put in your screening position. Um, we are in a world-class um, jurisdiction in Western Australia. There's been significant gold found throughout the whole of sandstone. You will see that resource continuing to grow. Um, and it is a... I guess it's underwritten by the, the existing resources, which are clearly um, still open. And then we have this high grade potential of, and this is what gets us quite excited because we, we have multiple opportunities to make a new discovery there. And I think so it's, a, it's certainly gonna be made at Sandstone. Um, and we're just pulling the teams together now to, um, to, to certainly unlock that. So I think that's, um, that really summarizes it. I think it's a very, very exciting project. Thank you. Thank you.